So uh, we're going to see how this goes. Um, as you may or may not be aware of, although I imagine most of you are, um, Nick Cannon had Professor Griff on his podcast um, earlier this week, and um, they said some stuff. Um, and uh, this video is really almost more for myself because I got a, I got a lot of thoughts going on inside of me that I got to put out there. Um, but I got to put them out there, right? Uh, so it's going to be sort of a, a response to that, commentary on that. And I'm going to try and do it um, in as few takes as possible because I'm busy. <laughs> um, so if it gets a little awkward, I apologize. Um, now, uh, they said some very, very uh, racist things um, in this video. They Nick Cannon suggested that um, melanin, uh, the chemical in, in uh, people's skin that uh, makes it go dark um, is somehow s has sort of a supernatural psychic power to it, um, which enables uh, people to be compassionate and kind and loving. Um, and that therefore, the less of it you have, um, and if you have like very little of it as you're like Scandinavian or something, then you lack that capacity um, on a fundamental level. Um, they uh, at one point, uh, Nick Cannon sort of like uh, got really giddy with glee um, about the prospect, therefore, of sort of like breeding um, white people out of existence. Um, and uh, while, while Griff didn't quite go that far, um, he seemed to say that rather it was identifying with a lack of melanin. Um, that would of necessity cause you to become an evil person. Uh, he, he later uh, around um, oh, one hour and 17 minutes uh, suggested that um, it's impossible to enter into the eschaton, that is to say like the, the final kingdom of God when it comes to earth or whatever the their equivalent would be in his theology, um, unless you uh have melanin in your skin and so that somehow uh white people um have to get it into them um in order to uh enter into the kingdom of god uh and so i guess we have to be like supernaturally um transformed into black people um otherwise we're damned uh, they also suggested things like uh that white people were, were basically incapable of being productive human beings um, that we couldn't uh, bring about good in the world. We could only take it from other people. Um, and that's the only way that we ever acquire anything. Um, to the point that uh, Griff actually suggested in the 57th minute of the interview um, that uh, ancient Greek is actually like an ancient black language um, and that white people just stole it, um, which is I don't know, like completely incoherent with his uh, with, with, the, with the logic behind his claim to be a, a Semite. But um, we can put that off to the side for a moment. Um, and so so they said some stuff, right, um, that's like derogatory about myself and my children and my wife um, and people that I care about. Um, and at the same time, um, I think it's, absolutely unproductive and unfair and unnecessary um, that Nick Cannon lost his job over this. Now, mind you, in Viacom's defense, he gets paid to be a personality, right? It's not like he gets paid to make sandwiches or, or program computers, right? And it's like, who cares what you do in your free time? Like, he gets paid to be Nick Cannon. So if they don't like Nick Cannon, then I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, but but I really don't think it's productive that that took place, and I definitely think it's 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 stupid that YouTube uh, took their video down. Um, and uh, and I and, and I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm just going to say it. Um, I don't want anybody to think that the reason I'm okay with it is because I'm like an anti-Semite, uh, because basically, according to their theory, um, Jews are white people, and uh, they are the worst kind of white people. So anything that they say about Jews is also going to get said about me, even though I'm not a Jew. Um, so, so there's really no way for me 
to support what they're doing and somehow try and separate myself from Jews. And now I'm not an anti-Semite. I just don't, it's unnecessary. It should be unnecessary that I say that, but I don't want to be labeled that way just because I'm saying that um, the, the derogatory things and, 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 and the hate-filled things, I, hate, I don't like the way that people use, that leftists use hate um, as like sort of a hammer to beat people ahead with. Right, but but there is some there is there's some sort of like deep seated hate, um, in in the things that they said, uh, despite and it's about me, right? And 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 I can't separate and then there's no way to separate myself from Judaism, um, within the context of what they said. If somehow I wanted to be an anti-Semite, which I don't and which I'm not, um, right? Uh, the reason, um, that I'm defending. Uh, not defending what they said, right, but their ability to say it in public without significant repercussions against them um, is because, well, first off, I'm like a pretty hardcore libertarian, but the re about free speech, but the reason I am is, is that, like, uh, do you think that that hate that they're expressing? Right, that anger that they're expressing um, is gonna go away just because you tell them to shut up. No, right? Um, no, it's just gonna get buried deep down in there, right? And it's never gonna come out. Like what has to happen, and 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 you know, I'm getting ahead of myself because again, I'm trying to do this in as few takes as possible. I'm gonna back up for a second and say this: I have found the past. I'm sure everyone has, right? Yeah, but I have found the past six months. Very, very, very difficult to process. Um, between uh, you know the COVID thing, which I think is is is, and it's not that it doesn't exist, right? It does exist, um, but the responses to it um, on both sides are are political responses rather than ethical or medical responses. Um, I find it annoying that um, the ethical responses, that the ability to decide what the ethical responses should be have been um, handed over to medical experts who have no expert in ethics, expertise in ex ethics. Um, but, but these decisions should be medical and ethical, not political. And, and, and they've been turned into politics. I found it very frustrating. Um, I find Black Lives Matter as a movement to be a terrifying thing. Um, not because I don't think that black people's lives matter, but because I think that there's, there's sort of I think that the ideology, although it's, it's going to be somewhat different, um, but I think that the feelings behind the Black Lives Matter movement are basically the same feelings um, that uh, Cannon and, and, and Griff were, were uh, pronouncing here, were saying here. Um, and I find those, those feelings, um, well, they're, they're so negatively directed at myself that I find them threatening, right? Um, and so I've had, a, I've had a really hard time processing what was going on. And the ability to um, sit down and spend an hour and you know, like 25 minutes or whatever listening to this podcast, because I did listen uh, to basically the whole thing. I think I got to like the last minute and a half when they were like, hey, on next show, blah, 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 whatever. And I just waste my time. <laughs> but, uh, but, but the content of it, I listened to the whole thing all the way through. And I found listening to these people um, express uh, their frustration and 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 uh, in in their own humanity, um, in realizing that realizing that it's identical to mine, which is sort of what I want to talk about here, um, incredibly cathartic, right? It's it helped me process. Um, so uh, it's necessary for these people who have these feelings, um, be they black supremacists as as uh, these people clearly are, and they're like slightly more than that. They're like white inferiorists, right? Because uh, Griff makes a point that Native Americans are black um, um, at some point. And so like um, by black people, he means all people who aren't white, right? So it's, 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 it's like a white inferiorist philosophy or a white supremacy, right? Um, and whatever else, whatever's going on there, uh, their inability to express those ideas and have someone engage with them is harmful, right? And my inability, um, and I don't mean 
because because YouTube's taken it away at this point. Now I manage I, I managed to listen to the whole thing, right? So uh, that is what it is. But my inability, because they've taken it away, someone else's inability, uh, who's like me, to listen to what they say with an open mind, I'm trying to make sense of where it is they're coming from, um, is damaging. It's damaging to them. It's damaging to us. If these people in favor of cancel culture were true Hegelians, right? They're Marxists. Um, but if they were true Hegelians, uh, they would realize um, that that what 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 has to happen is that the thesis has to come into counter with the antithesis, um, so that the synthesis, synthesis, which is the true uniting of the ideas and therefore the people who have them, um, can take place. Um, and and they get in the way of it on purpose. Um, I think because they well they, they no longer believe in objective reality and as a consequence they uh, can't um, they don't have any standard by which to measure things. But but right it's 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 not helpful. Um, now uh, what I wanted I, I started with this I'm ten minutes into this so who knows who's going to listen to the whole thing right? Um, but uh, what I wanted to do was describe the nature of the catharsis that took place um, as a consequence of listening to these men talk. Um, and again, I don't, I don't quite know where to start with that, but I'm going to start somewhere and, and it will make sense in the end of the day, um, at least if you can follow me right, uh, for long enough. Um, and that's this. Um, Christ's name is Jesus. Okay, um, I'm, I, I'm not, by the way, I'm not, the goal is not to make theological arguments contradicting that, right? That's not, that's not what I'm doing here. Uh, Christ's name is Jesus. And Jesus is just Greek uh, for Josh, right? Um, in Hebrew, his name was Yeshua, which is a shortened form, uh, form of Yehoshua. Yehoshua is jo Joshua, right? It kind of sounds like, like that. Um, it is a different language. It's not going to sound exactly the same, right? So Jesus got named Josh, right? That's what his mother named him because God told her to. And the reason that God told Mary to name Jesus Joshua, right, is because God wanted his son to uh, live his life in such a way that he looked up to the Joshua of the Old Testament, the man who brought uh, the Israelites into the promised land um, and defeated their enemies as a model. But who was this Joshua? Well, to be perfectly clear, uh, he was a man who committed genocide. Right? Um, now, in theory, at God's behest, right? because uh, God said to Joshua, um, I'm giving, I have a plan for the people of Israel. Um, and in order for me to have this plan, I need to give them a land. And um, there's these groups of people who live in Cana and uh, they're evil, right? And I've uh, let the evil of their society degrade to such an extreme point that there's no hope for them anymore. Um, and so uh, I'm going to give you their land. Um, so I got this thing I wanna do. The only way it's gonna work well uh, is if you go in and you wipe them out completely, right? Now, now listen, I don't care you agree um, that God exists or that God would say that sort of thing. That's the story in the Old Testament. Okay, you just like read the book and that's what he says. Um, and so Joshua's like, aye, aye, captain, right? And he goes off to do this. Um, but he doesn't finish. And you might say, hey, that's that's ethical, right? Because God told him to commit genocide. He only committed like half a genocide. Um, but actually, no, that's worse, right? Because the reason God told him to go in and kill all of these people was because he said their presence is going to destroy what it is I'm trying to do. It's going to make it basically impossible for me to do what it is I'm trying to do here. So you have to get rid of them. They have to be gone. Um, and uh, what Joshua did is he killed like a third of them, right? Um, and so what that means is the deaths of, of I think that 33% of the population, whatever it was, that those thousands and thousands of people uh, were pointless. He achieved nothing in the end of the day, basically, right? Because uh, the contaminant of the other two thirds was still there, right? Um, 
And so they all died in vain. Um, so, so not only did he attempt genocide, but, and fail at it, um, against the direct command of God, but then he caused all of the people that he killed to, to die for, in essence, no purpose. Um, and this is the person that God uh, gave to Jesus to be the man he looks up to. Um, and the reason, and, and now, now I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but part of the reason why God would even do that, right? He could have named him anything. He could name him Steve, right? Whatever, right? The reason that he had him named that was because he wanted to, the, one of the things he wanted to communicate to his son. Now, now, Jesus as the son of God, right, knows this as God, right? But as a human, okay, what, what needed to be communicated to Jesus was you are part of a community. The community has an historical reality to it. Um, and you have to situate yourself in the history, right? Um, you are at a per certain place in the progression of your people. And, and you have to function there. You can't function independent of that progression. Um, and, and the reason for that is because human beings have parents, right? And we're, and like when they're small children, there's nothing they can do about uh, needing to have those parents around. And those parents have made decisions for them already. They've already set things in motion. Um, and so if you want to be like the slightest bit successful, um, if you want to achieve more than just one human being can achieve on his or her own, then you have to stand on the shoulders of your parents, right? You have to take what it is they've given you um, and you have to build on it, regardless of who they were regardless of what evil shit they did, right? You have to. Um, now, um, I want to bring up another biblical story um, in order to illustrate this, because, there's, because there's a, there is a, a theme in the Bible that, that talks about this particular topic, um, which God is sort of requiring of Jesus to do. Like, how is it that you take evil genocidal failure and use him as a thing that motivates you to do right, right? Which is what God is asking of Christ um, by naming him Jesus. And the answer to that is, is um, also uh, found in the Old Testament, um, the story of Noah, okay? Um, so uh, Noah's the flood guy, right? For all of those uh, of you who don't know this. And um, what happens is, the world is like crazy evil. And God says, I don't know, right? Killing everybody with water. Right? We're gonna flood the whole world, we're all gonna die. And I'm gonna save Noah and his family. Right? And they go through this flood, so they pass through this this water event. Right? And uh, when the when the boat lands, um, the first thing that Noah does is he plants a vineyard. And when the vineyard gets uh, ripe, has wine, and when he drinks the wine, he gets uh, like pass out drunk and ends up in his tent, mind you, um, but completely naked. Um, um, uh, so the alcohol uh, super. And um, what happens is one of his sons comes in and he sees his father naked. He thinks it's funny. He calls his brothers and it's like, <laughs> look at this. And his brothers tell us, uh, him that he's an idiot, right? And what they do is they go get a blanket and they they walk backwards towards the father so they can't see his nakedness. And they cover him with the blanket. Now, what does that mean? Well, well, well on, on, a, on a particular level in the story, what they're trying to do is they're, on, they're trying to honor their father. And it's the fourth the fourth commandment, um, uh, fifth commandment if you're Protestant. Um, honor your mother and father, right? Um, but but on a symbolic level, what they're doing, the way that they honor their father, uh, the way that you that you move forward now that the destructive activity has taken place, right? Or or that that, that the cleansing of the water has taken place is that uh, you cover the nakedness of your father, right? You hide it. Uh, his nakedness being that which is shameful about him, right? And I don't, 
cares if nakedness is always shameful, right? In this story, it's a shameful act that got him naked, and 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 it's going to be a symbol of 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 of, of shame, right? It has all the way from the beginning, right? Um, the Adam and Eve uh, are shamed because of their nudity uh, as a consequence of the fall, and therefore capability, right? It's a way of covering uh, their their shame, uh, their sinfulness, right? Um, and so that's what they do. They cover uh, the, uh, the nakedness of the father. And, and that's the reason they do that is because that is how you keep the fourth commandment. That is the appropriate thing to do when you encounter your father's nakedness. When you encounter his shameful activity, right? You cover it up. Now you, you cover it up in, in two ways, in two ways, right? The first is this. Um, despite Joshua's failings, right? Um, he's not all bad, right? No, no one is utterly depraved, despite um, what Griffin Cannon wants to say about white people, right? No one is utterly depraved, right? Um, everybody's father, for all of his fail, for all of their failings, his failings, I don't I mean, in the singular, whatever, I don't know which, which pronoun I should use there. Uh, is has virtues, has accomplishments, has things that he has done well, right? He's got things he's messed up. That's the shame, right? That's the nakedness. But he has things which he has done well, which you are capable of looking up to. No human being has gone through life accomplishing anything. No human being has gone through life with no virtues. I mean, if you did, you tried to get no virtues. And that itself, like the capacity to be that motivated is a virtue. So like, huh, right? Like like everybody has something good about them. And so uh, the way you honor your father is that you focus on the things he did well. Like, right? And you look up to them and you see them as a goal. And so what did Joshua do? Well, he did give the Israelites the land. Right? He did lead them into the promised land. And they couldn't do that the generation before. They were too chicken shit. Right? So, so he was brave enough to lead the people in there. And he was motivating enough to get the people to come. Right? And he crossed through his own body of water, which is the Jordan, into the promised land. It's going to be a theme. Right? Um, and, and, and he attempted to destroy the enemies of Israel. Right? The enemies of Christ's people. Which is not a bad thing, right? If they're out to get you and out to destroy what God is trying to do. And so Jesus can look up to that, right? But the second thing, the second way that you cover your father's um, nakedness is that uh, you, when you see his failings, right? And you, and, and you do look them square in the eye. What you do is you you find the virtues and and the accomplishments that should have been his, but that because of his shamefulness, because of his failings, he did not achieve. And you incorporate into yourself those things, so that now in in your lifetime, in your activities, in this this reality that you're building upon what your father did, um, you correct his failings, right? And that's what Joshua did for Moses, right? Because now Moses is not his actual father, but he's his his, his uh, mentor, right? So his spiritual father. Um, what Moses did was he he could not lead the people into the promised land. He was called to. That was his mission. Take them out of Egypt into the promised land. He couldn't do it because of uh, his circumstances in part, and also uh, in part because of the people, because of his own his own moral failings. And he didn't get to enter the promised land as a consequence of his own moral failings. Um, and Joshua overcomes that, right? Joshua covers Moses' nakedness. And leads the people into the promised land. Um, and Jesus is meant to see that although uh, it was out of Joshua's ability to reform the people who were in Canaan, 
because that's what God tells him. It's just not going to happen. Right? So you've got to get rid of them. Um, but the real enemies of Israel were not those people, but their sin, their vice, their evil. And so the real enemy of the people of God is immorality in the world. And so Jesus now has the ability, because he's the God-man, to overcome those things. Right? And so that's where Jesus takes this, right? I'm going to lead people into the true promised land, right? Which is this communion with God. Um, and, and, and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to wipe out the evil which is in them that keeps them from, that keeps them from being there, that pollutes their actions and their thoughts. And, and, and that's what he, do, that's what he does. That's what Christians believe Jesus does, right? And, and it seems to be what Jesus uh, at least in, in the scripture says that he's doing. Um, and so Jesus covers Joshua's nakedness. And, and, and I'll, I'll, this, this is repeated. This is repeated uh, multiple uh, times uh, in scripture. Um, Elijah is a new Moses, right? He's there to cover uh, because the fact that Joshua fails, right, is indicative of uh it results in this paganism remaining in the holy land um and elijah's mission is to, to wipe it out um but then elijah fails and elisha comes and elisha is the new moses the new joshua the new elijah right and he's and he uh does it better and now jesus John the Baptist is then the new uh, the new Elijah, the new Moses, and then Jesus is the new Joshua, the new Elisha, right? But if 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 Elisha is the new Elijah, then Jesus is also the new Elijah, right? And and blah 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 blah. Here's the that pattern that that look to the past, find the virtues of your fathers, live them out, and 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 cover their failings by overcoming them. That's the pattern that God lays down for Christ. It is the pattern that Christianity lays down for humanity. Uh, it is the proper fourth commandment, right? It's it, oh, the fifth commandment, the honor thy mother and father, whichever whichever Christian tradition you come from, right? It's 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 the proper acting out of that. And if you, and therefore it, therefore it's just because the Ten Commandments just describe the way that a fully functioning human being acts, right? That's what morality is. To be a moral person just means to be be a functioning human being, right? And so functioning human beings, beings honor their mother and father, functioning human beings cover their father's nakedness. Um, they look to their virtues and they overcome their vices. That's what they do. Now, around an hour and 11 minutes, okay, um, Griffin Nick hit, hit, uh, get to the heart of the matter. Right? They, they say really what it is that's going on with them, where it is, how it is there that they're um, attempting to uh, achieve. Why is it they're saying what they're saying? Why is it all of these thoughts are bubbling up in them? And, and what they say is that um, Cannon asks uh, Griff, because uh, he's clearly aware of what he's doing, uh, is that if they're for love, because I want to say this, right? Uh, before I move on, um, what I see in these men is two guys who have a lot of hate deep, 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 deep down in their heart that's bubbling up, um, but who know on a surface level that, that that hate is bad, who want to be loving individuals. Just why when Nick Cannon gets confronted by this, he says, anybody who knows me know I don't have, doesn't ha I don't have any hate in my heart. Now, he, it's wrong, right? But the hate is so deep down there that on a conscious level, he, he's he's unaware of it and he rejects it, right? So he's you, you've got two people who who are trying to embrace love, right? But but for whom the hate is so deep that 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 it's it, it hasn't gotten taken out of them yet, um, or won't ever. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and so Cannon uh, knows that love. He says, this is if we're for love, right? And I'm, I'm, I can paraphrase um, because I can't go back and look it up because YouTube's taking it down. Um, maybe he's got it somewhere else, but whatever. Um, if we're for love, even for loving white people, then why are we creating these divisions amongst us? Right? So he knows that he's that his actions are divisive in relation to white people. 
Um, and Griff's response is that actually it's the white people making the movies. He says this, right? Um, and again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I can't give you the exact quote. Um, because white people have not done anything themselves, and they have acquired everything from other people, as a result, they actually want to be those other people whom they have taken things from. Um, as a consequence of that, uh, they hate those other people. Because if you hate yourself, how can you not hate everyone? Or how, how can you not hate the people who caused you to hate yourself? Right? So, something, something to that to that effect. Right? If you hate who you are, I think is something like the way he puts it. Right? How can you not hate your fellow man? Um, <clears throat> and what I see in Griff there is a projection of what's going on inside of himself out onto the other, right? That, that he's having certain feelings that he wants to uh, reject, that he wants to overcome somehow. And so, so what he's done is, is he's uh, taken those things that he dislikes and he's projected them out on, onto his adversary. Because, and, and, and I don't, I think this is 100% accurate, but I think this is the way he, he, he sort of perceives the world as he grew up, right? That he grew up and lived uh, in a culture uh, uh, to which uh, black people have made substantial contributions, but which because of, of the historical uh, founding and nature of the United States has always had a certain, certain British hegemony, right? Uh, which he's generalized into sort of like white Hegemony. Um, I happen to be looking at this in this list on like the uh, National History of African American History or whatever, and they're describing what whiteness is. They're describing British nature, right? Some of many of the things they they say have absolutely nothing to do with Italians or Slavs, right? They're they're British uh, uh, categories. Um, not all of them. Some some of the stuff is just basic human behavior. Um, but uh, but some of it is 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 like like the bland food thing. Like, and no, food in Italy is not bland, right? English food is bland, right? Um, but but whatever. Uh, so so he's 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 when he says white culture, he means white American culture, which is British culture, um, because because British people founded the country and the black people were brought here, um, against their will, right? And, 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 and then, you know, sort of like following that, they say something to the effect of that, like, when you take people out of their land and you bring them into this new place and you leave their culture behind, right? You leave their food behind. They can't even feed themselves, right? You take everything from them. Um, what, what Griff is actually saying is, right? I find myself, I was born into a world where I didn't have the capacity to follow the fourth commandment. Not because he couldn't treat his mother well, but because he didn't have fathers in the sense of like a Joshua, a Moses, an Elijah, right? That he could look to, that he felt like were his, that he could situate himself in a situation where he said, these are my fathers. I'm going to cover their nakedness. And, and move forward in this historical progression of my people. Because, because his fathers, as he sees it, were stolen from him. And the fathers he sees, uh, who have accomplishments in the place that he's at, right? I'm not saying black people have not accomplished, I'm not saying that black people in Africa have not accomplished anything. I'm saying that he's been removed from that, right? He's in, he's in white America, right? Um, that the accomplishments he sees are the accomplishments of the other's fathers, right? Um, uh, the accomplishments of these British people and the accomplishments, and, and, and the British people um, have sort of an, accepted a religious culture from the Jews. Uh, and, and Jews have hegemony in the religious world of the West, right? And so he can't, he doesn't feel as though he can look to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Jesus as a father. Um, 
and Jesus has no nakedness to cover, but whatever, whose nakedness you cover and, uh, and, and build from, uh, right? Um, he doesn't feel that he, that he, that he has that because those are the Jews. Those people belong. Those are the fathers of the Jews and Washington, um, Aristotle, whatever. These are the, these are the fathers of the whites, right? Um, and I have no. And so what he did, what, what he did was, is he appropriate, he want, what he wants to do, what he wants to do is he wants to be able to appropriate the fathers of his own culture he's living in, America, to himself. He feels unable to do that um, because, uh, because he feels racially um, segregated. And, and, you know, um, when Griff was growing up, uh, that's just what was happening. I, I, I um, you know, um, I think that to say that to a black person now, um, that they're being forced into segregation is, uh, is, is not true. But, but, I mean, Griff's, when Griff was growing up, it's just true. It's just true, right? That he's being othered, right? And he wants to be part of this mainstream culture. Um, and so he, what he, he desperately wants to appropriate the accomplishments of these people for himself. Um, and so what he does is he, he develops, and not just himself, right? This, this is a group of people who've done this, right? Um, he develops this complex mythology, which allows him to say that all of the accomplishments of American culture and of Jewish religious heritage are his on a racial level, right? They're his fathers. Those are the accomplishments of his fathers. And that these white people, including the Jews, who he, who he says aren't, aren't really Jews, right? They're, they're just white people pretending to be Jews. Um, that these white people have uh, done what he's actually doing, right? Which is, which is taken the accomplishments of his fathers and appropriated them to themselves. And then that's, and, and, that, and the only way you could really believe that is if you really did say to yourself, white people are incapable of being productive, right? And so uh, they are not responsible for any good that has ever happened, happened in the world. Only, only we are. And they just take it and say it's mine. Um, and, and if you have, once you've accepted that mythology, in order to get yourself a father that you can look up to and whose nakedness you can cover and, and, and from whom you can move forward, um, and, and situate yourself historically within a people, um, that that's, that's the goal, right? That's what they're, that's what they feel that they're lacking and, 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 and they're crying out, uh, and, and, and attempting to process that. Um, but they do that to believe, in order to do that. They have to believe this mythology. And once um once you've done that, once you've accepted the mythology, in order to get that goal, then how could you not hate white people? I mean, if they are that thing, that parasite, which is lacking, like that, that, that it's it's their nature to lack, their nature to be unproductive and to, and to leech off of society. They have no they have no choice but to do it. Um, how how could you not? Be utterly uh, disdainful, at the very least, towards that thing. Like, look at it with disgust. It would be a disgusting thing, um, especially when it's the disgusting thing, which is like attacking you, man. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, now I'm not saying any of that's true. White people are Jews. I, I, whether Jews are white or not, don't care. Don't care. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if that's what you think. Then, um, yeah, that's going to happen, right? And that's how you're going to feel. Um, and, 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 and why do I bring this up? Because, because now I know, right? I was able to listen to these guys and I was able to, to understand where does it coming from? Because that's exactly like, like when, when I have a problem with the Black Lives Matter movement, Right? That's exactly uh, where uh, it's that insecurity or that fear, right? Uh, that's that concern that that's that's coming up in me as well. Because and I, I want to put Confederates off to one side for a moment. I think that you can cover everyone's nakedness, right? Because everyone has fathers and everyone has virtues. But but like let's let's just let's just I'll just branch you, right? That 
Sorry, that wasn't meant to be a pun. <laughs> I'll just grant you that that Lee was evil, and that all the people who fought, all the people in the South were evil during that time frame, and, and there's no redeeming. Let's just, just give you that point, right? We need to tear down all their statues and burn all Confederate flags we want, right? Let's let's just say that that's the case. Grant is not one of those men. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, not one of those men. George Washington, not one of those men. Thomas Jefferson, not one of those men. John Adams, uh, not one of those men. Junipero Serra, not one of those men. St. Louis, who lived 800 years ago, not one of those men. They all had failings, they all had failings, and they all had virtues. Plato, Aristotle, Boethius, Thomas Aquinas, Locke. None of them were one of those men. But it's, it's uh, Cervantes, of all people, not one of those men. But it's those people that are being torn down. It is those people that are being attacked as well. It is those people that are being maligned. Um, because uh, the people in the Black Lives Matter movement are feeling the same way Griffin Cannon are feeling. Right? This culture that I live in is not mine, so I want to destroy it so that I can have my own. It is not fair that I don't have a father. Uh, that I don't have a, I don't mean like I'm talking about black fatherlessness or whatever, right? I mean, just mean like it's not fair that I don't have these this historical framework in which to situate myself so that I can move forward. Why does that matter? Well, because if you take it from me, then what the heck am I supposed to do, man? I'm in the exact same situation you are. Right? If I don't have a father that I can look up to, if I don't have... Uh, Um, this historical place in which to situate myself in a culture so that I can move forward. And what am I supposed to do? I don't know how to function like that because I know that this pattern exists in scripture and I know that it's, that it's part of the command of God. And I know that because, because it's what it means to be a human, right? Humans have parents. They, 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 they live in relation to them. Um, how on earth am I supposed to function in the world? You're just going to take 60% of the population. Mind you, like, the white liberals hate white people, too. So, you know, I don't know. You're just going to take, like, 60% of the population and tell them, uh, I'm sorry, um, you, don't, you don't get to have a heritage anymore. Right? Um, just like I don't. That's not that's not a solution. That that can't be a solution. That's not something I'm I'm willing to allow uh, someone to do to my children and grandchildren. It's, it's not okay. It's not okay any more than it was okay that it happened to them. Right? It's not okay to do that to someone. Um, so how do we move forward? Right. Well. I want, to, I want to make um, one, well, okay. Well, the, the first thing that uh, we can do is this. Um, the, the tradition in America, um, because America is, is an incredibly uh, unique place, in that uh, the government here is actually, uh, far from being modeled on a slaveocracy, is actually modeled on the structure of the Christian church and of the, and of the ancient Jewish people, right? Um, if you look at uh, the structure, at least of, at least of, of the Catholic church, um, it's a federal system, right? Independent uh, diocesan uh, churches, semi-autonomous, uh, properly autonomous, you might actually say, um, but then they fall under a larger government, just like the way the states work here, right? Um, it's, uh, it's built on, on, on sort of like the promises in first Samuel, um, and, and in, and in the book of Judges about the way that God wanted Israel to function, right? That's, they tried to grant as much 
uh, liberty to people as possible and reject kings for the very reason that they rejected kings, right? Um, that God told them to reject the king despite the fact that they were the one. Um, be, that, that's the goal, right? You can see that in, 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 in the founding fathers, um, in the way that they designed the government. Um, and, and as a consequence, right, uh, just as, and you see this in Galatians and in other uh, places in the, in the New Testament, um, in Christian theology at least, that when, when someone is baptized, when they, when they pass through that water, um, like Noah did, when they pass through that water, uh, they are grafted on to the Jewish people. And uh, the completely uh, accepted into that people um, and all of their accomplishments all of their merits, all of the promises God made to Abraham, they become there. Likewise, when you're granted American citizenship, which black people have, right? Um, what comes with that is, uh, is when, when, when Americans are acting like Americans, is a complete acceptance into the people of this country with all of our history, with all of our accomplishments and our freedoms. Right. Um, so, so it's just the nature of the country, right? That 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 black people, especially black people whose fathers really like who, who are descendants of slaves and therefore whose fathers really did contribute to the foundation and the and the growth and the development of this country, even though the historical circumstances are unfortunately the case that their names have been forgotten. Um, they have a place in that. They really are their accomplishments. It's not that white people did nothing, and it's not that black people did nothing, or that all of us did everything. It's that we both did it. And the circumstances were not perfect, right? But, but what we need to do, what, what, we, what we are capable of as a consequence of that is for your fathers to be our fathers and our fathers to be your fathers, and we can both cover our father's nakedness together and move forward, right? In a way that's productive, in a way that is uh, humanizing towards us. To both of us, and we can be one, right? That's a solution. Um, and and what we need to do with that is we need to uh, what 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 this passing through a water event in the Bible represents is starting over, right? Because the world is created out of water, so it's a recreation. That's like uh, maybe you'll find some story where that's going to be the case. But like 99% of the time, you pass through a water event, and and what you're doing is you're getting to start over. Um, that's what Noah is, right? Um, that's what uh, crossing the Jordan by Joshua is, so baptism is. What we need is a starting over. And like, listen, um, I've not been in favor of reparations or anything like that. The biggest reason I'm not in favor of them is this. Right? In addition to, no, no, forget it. The biggest reason I'm not in favor of them is this. Um, I don't believe it'll end it, right? I don't believe that we'll have a starting over moment. I believe that reparations will get paid and people will still be upset about what happened in the past and more of the reparations will be demanded and more reparations will be demanded and more reparations will be demanded. That's, that's what I think is going to happen. It's the same reason that I'm not in favor of amnesty for illegal immigrants. Right? I'd be, like, like I get it. They're here, blah, 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 blah. We could just grant them amnesty. That, I, I get that. Um, and I get the evil of, of throwing them out or whatever. But, but the reality is that we've done that a couple of times and every time it happens, right? Uh, you just get more illegal immigrants, and then we got to then 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 like, what's the point? But it's the same thing here. It's like, like we can give we can give reparations, but if there's no uh, okay, now we're done with this, right? And the slavery and the Jim Crow and 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 whatever else it is, right? Right? Like like our our claims over the evils there are done, and right? if that doesn't happen, then the reparations achieve nothing. There is no repairing happening. Right. Um, 
so so if, if, if black people need something to feel like our fathers are the same fathers, like we get like a Frederick Douglass day that's bigger than Washington's day or whatever, or, 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 you know, like, like Harriet Tubman on some money or, or like going and finding the names of some of some really badass slaves, right. And like just honoring them who are like on Washington's plantation along with him or something, something, you know what I mean? Like, if if there's if there's something that that can be done to actually achieve that start over so that we can have the same fathers and we can move together move forward together um then let's do it right so that nick and 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 i don't i don't know what professor Griff's real name is uh first name but, but so that they can feel that way right so they don't have to keep feeling fatherless which is how they feel right um which has caused them to to come to these conclusions then let's do it I'm all in. I mean, like, like within reason, right? Like, if you want me to like cut off my right arm or whatever, like, like maybe we, but like, like, what is it that's necessary that we can both agree to? And let's have that conversation because again, the conversation is important. And let's do that. If black people don't want that, I get it. I get it. I get why you, I, I get why you wouldn't want it. Um, but then we're always going to exist in this constant conflict. Um, because uh, if you don't have the same dad, and I understand that, like, I'm going to say this, right? You all can contextualize it however you see fit and, and have it make sense, right? Because this, this does make sense. If, uh, if, if, if you live in a household with a father, right, and that ain't your father, and you don't respect his authority in the household, then you're going to have a real hard time being their part of the family. Right? This is going to be a constant source of conflict. Right? If people are going to live in a house together, they need to have the same father. They at least need to recognize the authority of the, of the father that's in charge and not be bitter about it. Right? And that's, and if that can't happen, then it can't happen. If that's not what, what African Americans want, if there's a certain segment of them that don't want that, then, then I get it. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it, but what has to happen is that somehow we separate. I'm not in favor of segregation. I'm absolutely against it. But what you see in these black life like you see in the chop, right? Is you see intentional segregation at black only areas where they can go be black by themselves and don't have to deal with your culture. Right? Because, because they know, like, like the leftist radicals know that that's what's necessary to achieve their ends. Right? Um, because like, as I said, right? Uh, what's motivating Nick Cannon and, and Professor Griff to say these things, like the underlying emotions, and sentiments are the same thing that motivates um, the Black Lives Matter movement. Not every last person involved, right? But the movement as a whole, and that's why. And and and, and but they haven't um, sort of uh, bought into the idea that literally everything um, that exists in white culture was created by Black people, so they can just appropriate it to themselves. So, so what do they do? They intentionally segregate, right? They intentionally separate because, because they don't want to live together in the same household with the same fathers. Um, and, and then they have, well, an alternative goal, which I'll, which I'll get to in a second. Um, and, and, and I'm not in favor of segregation. Um, but even if it was an idea that I wanted to, uh, toy with, right? Um, separate but equal is, is never going to work, right? It didn't work in the past. It's never going to work because, uh, well, if the two, uh, well, because even if, you're, if one side's not trying to subjugate the other, which is certainly what happened in the past, um, if the two sides are separated, um, right, they're going to do different things and achieve different things. And the end goal is not going to be the same. Um, just like, you know, uh, all of the households in this city are separated and none of them are equal. They're all uh, different in socioeconomic status, goals, household life, everything's completely different, right? So there's no, there's going to be no possibility of separate but equal. So what it would mean to separate would be to like break off part of the country and just like tell black people, uh, that's yours now. Now you can go find your own fathers, right? And And you can form your own national mythos and like do your own thing. And uh, <laughs> that's 
probably never going to happen, right? That that's 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 not a while it might be desirable to some um it's it's not going to be uh something that actually takes place. And like plus we tried it with Liberia and that country hasn't turned out amazingly. Although I, I guess that's technically still an option for people if that's what they want. Uh, not that I'm suggesting it to anyone, right? Just I'm just saying that like um, we tried it once. Still, technically, the place exists. But like in the past, you know, like racist white people would say would would like try and go out of their way to get black people to move there to get them out of the country, right? And I I don't want to be tarred as that sort of person because that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if there are racist black people who want to go to a place for former African American slaves to have their own country, like the place is a real place. Like if, if that's what you want, right? But like other than that, it's just it's just not something that can be done, right? So that, that leaves us with, with only the one option, right? Which is the one I suggested before. And of course the problem with that um, is that like, Black people aren't a homogenous group, right? They're not all the same. They don't all have the same wants and needs and thoughts and and uh, and expectations. So, what would it even mean um, to have that conversation, uh, where what do you need to sort of put the past behind us to have that uh, passing through a water moment, right? The restarting moment. Uh, the rebirth moment. I don't know, but but that that whatever that is, that's what we have to figure out because that is the most reasonable option. Right? But 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 what we're doing right now, what we're doing right now is not is not tenable. There's another story in the Old Testament, um, which is which follows the same structure. It's it's, it's Elisha uh, mentioned him before, and the she bears. Right after Elijah has gone up into heaven, Elisha passes through the Jordan River, um, and he comes back into the Holy Land. So he's passed through one of these water events. Uh, Elijah's life has been a failure. <laughs> and now Elisha is meant to, to carry on to success his failure. Something to that effect, right? So he's passed over uh, this, this starting over event, which is the crossing through the Jordan River. And what happens is that these, these kids, they're, I, you know, it's not just, I think they're like five year olds. I don't think, I think they're like teenage boys being jerks, right? Because that's what teenage boys do. They come up to Elisha and they say, Baldy, baldy, right? They're making fun of him because of the nakedness of his head, right? They're not covering his nakedness. They're, they're pointing it out. They're consistently pointing it out. And the consequence of this is that Alicia curses them. Because someone who does that is cursed of God, right? who's constant, who doesn't cover their father's nakedness. Right? And, and the consequence of the curse is that the she bears come out of the woods and devour them. This is one of those stories that people tell you uh, for fun. I mean, people have asked this like, things were absolutely crazy. I don't know why we got to do this. This is not, it doesn't sound like Jesus at all. What the heck is going on? She bears death. Ah. But actually, um, if you don't cover your father's nakedness, uh, that is what will happen. Right? What will happen is that, is that, is that a, an indignant I don't mean that in a pejorative way. It's like a, like, a, like a legitimately angry and frustrated and upset feminine force will show up and destroy something. Um, and, and that's what that's why I see an intersexual feminist. Right? They are the she bears. And, and, and like, like let, let's just be clear, right? This is built into the structure of humanity. What is this story saying? And what is it I'm saying sort of is happening on a grand scale in the country? It's like happens in families, right? If dad's shameful behavior is not kept hidden from the children, then mama bear shows up, right? And somebody's getting eaten. <laughs> That's what that story says, right? If you don't cover the nakedness of your father, if you do not hide his shamefulness, then mama bear's coming, right? And if you're dad and you're not hiding your shamefulness, then then you're gonna get chewed out, right? 
And if you're kids and you just keep pointing out your father's failures and your wife's, his wife's had enough of it, right? And she's going to get you, right? That's it. That, that's what I'm saying, right? Mama bear is coming, right? And that's what the, that's, that's what intersectional feminism is because they, they are obsessed with uncovering the nakedness of our fathers and just laying it bare. And as a consequence, they create this destructive force. And it has no ending other than the complete burning down of society so that something brand new can be built. You don't, but you don't want that. Right? You want your father's inheritance. You want the good he did. So, so, so that's not an option, right? And that's where I see us going. And it terrifies the shit out of me. I'm freaking out. So what can we do that we can all feel like we have fathers? Because I don't know how to function without them. We need to continue to have that conversation. And, and, and what Nick, what Nick Cannon and what Professor Griff were saying um, in their in their podcast is an important element of that conversation, even though it was full of hate, right? Even though it was it, it was disparaging. I think it was an it was a necessary element of that conversation. That conversation needs to continue. We need to figure out answers um, rather than just devour our children, right? Um, and and, 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 and and I'll close by saying that at least with can I'll, I'll close by saying two things. First is this: um, accept the fact that I have my house because on some level it's my it was my father's um, great uncle's whatever like my father's house, right? And then I have my books They're over there, right? Because um, they're they were written by my fathers, right? And I live in this city because it's where my fathers came. Right. And, 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 and despite the fact that, that, that all of those things, um, except for the fact rather that all of those things are deeply connected to my father's, right. Um, you can have all of it. You can have my wealth. You can have my money. You can have my books. I don't mean like any black person ever just like show them the house. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But, but like, like I, I can give up all of that if I have that cultural heritage in which I can function. And and while while I'm far more willing to sacrifice than most people, um, I think that like generally speaking, I can't speak for all of them, and there are certainly white supremacists out there who feel exactly the same way that that sort of these black supremacists or black inferiorists feel this you know, flip-flop. Um, I can't speak for for uh, um, left-leaning white people because uh, Studies show that they actually have an outward bias. They dislike themselves and other white people, um, at least amongst conservatives. Um, conservative white Americans, by and large, uh, what they all they want is just to embrace uh, African Americans as brothers and pull, tell them just like wholeheartedly uh, uh, that we have accomplished nothing without you. Right, all of our accomplishments are, are your accomplishments, and, and and you can feel at home in them. We want you to feel at home in them. We want to be united with you. We want to be one people with you. Um, and 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 anything, anything you have suffered or are suffering, uh, we want to take that suffering onto ourselves as one people. Not as the other, which has to suffer at your hands, but 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 as one people suffering with you. Um, if you if you would only let us, right? And, and we don't care. We don't particularly care if our if our grandchildren or our great grandchildren have pigment in their skin, as long as the nation, the people. That we are, and 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 and, and her heritage, and and the ideals of freedom, uh, that that have grown up in that nation, that people, uh, 
don't vanish from the face of the earth, so that we know how to orient ourselves in the world. That's all we want. And I think that if, if these two men could hear that message, uh, they, you might actually bring some healing to them. But they can't hear that message until they've spoken what's in their heart. Right? And so you've got to let them speak. So anyway, um, God bless. And uh, have a good day.